Welcome to Everyday Linux User, today we answer the question. Is Linux and more specifically, Linux Mint, good for software developers? Let's start with the IDE, arguably the best IDE available is Visual Studio Code. In Linux Mint's software manager there are three options for Visual Studio Code available. It is worth reading the comments for these packages before installing them. The Visual Studio Code packages within Software Manager are flat packs and this causes issues when trying to add extensions and running Google Chrome for debugging purposes. It is better to get the deb package from Microsoft's website. Open a browser and navigate to code.visualstudio.com forward slash download. Click on the Debian Ubuntu package. After the package has downloaded, double click on it and when the package installer loads, click install. There are also RPM packages and tar files for other distributions. JavaScript programmers can install Node from the software manager. It is worth noting that the version available in the software manager is version 12.22.9. The latest available package on the Node website is 18.10 and the LTS version is 16.10. As with Visual Studio Code, it is probably better to install Node from the official website. If you build APIs then you are probably aware of the Postman application. Postman is also available from the software manager in Linux Mint. In order to manage your source code, you will need a source control management program such as GIT. Other programs are available including Subversion. If you don't want to use the GIT command line, you might wish to use a graphical tool such as GIT Cola. GIT Cola provides a visual representation of all your code branches, commits, and merges. Linux Mint has Python 3 pre-installed. However, if you want to install Python packages using pip, then you will need to install pip from the software manager. Visual Studio Code isn't the only IDE available for Linux Mint. There are dozens of them, some of them are free and some of them are proprietary. Redgate produce proprietary IDEs for Java, Python, and JavaScript and they are called IntelliJ, PyCharm, and WebStorm respectively. There are other free IDEs for Java such as NetBeans and Eclipse. Eclipse can also be used for Python development. Visual Studio Code is probably the best IDE for JavaScript, but there is also brackets. Relational databases can be created and maintained using MySQL. The Linux Mint software manager includes the MySQL server and client. Alternatively, you can also use MariaDB. There are a number of visual tools available such as PHP, MySQL and Squirrel. SQL Server is not available from the Linux Mint Software Manager. You can, however, install SQL Server from Microsoft's website. SQL Management Studio isn't natively available to Linux but there are other options available for managing SQL Server databases. For old-school Visual Basic developers, there is an application called Gambas which provides an interactive development environment for creating rapid applications. Now that you have seen which tools are available, here are some examples of how the tools work. Starting with GIT Cola, I am cloning a JavaScript web application which uses the React framework. Within GIT Cola you can see the full history of the development of the web application. In order for the web application to work I need to run npm install. NPM isn't installed by default but it is available from the Linux Mint Software Manager. As with Node, it is probably better installing it all from the Node website as the version in the Software Manager is many versions behind. I can now open Visual Studio Code simply by running code. I can run the application by choosing the Run Without Debugging option from the Run menu. Google Chrome loads in the web application which enables you to create a CV or resume.
I can also run the application straight from the command line. All I have to type is npm start. I can create web APIs using Visual Studio Code. I can use C Sharp to create a web API. In this example I will create the default weather API and run it via Visual Studio Code. In order to do this I need to download and install .NET Core from Microsoft's website. With .NET Core installed, I can now create a new c -sharp application. It is worth installing a number of c -sharp extensions such as c -sharp Essentials within Visual Studio Code. After I have created the application, I can run it and this will allow me to access the web API from a browser. If I type in localhost with the correct port then I receive weather information for various coordinates. Postman is a great tool for testing APIs. As you can see here I can call the endpoint of the weather forecast API and it will return a JSON object with the coordinates and weather forecast for various places. You don't need to write APIs using c -sharp. You can just as easily create a web API using JavaScript, Node, and Express. In this example I have created a simple endpoint which simply returns hello when you go to localhost on port 3000. So how do you create desktop apps for Linux? You can create cross-platform apps using JavaScript, Node, and Electron. You can also use Python with either tkinter, gtk, or qt. This example shows a mock layout of an application using Electron. If you want to create an application very quickly then you can use Gambas. Gambas is a lot like Visual Basic. There is a basic form. You drag and drop the controls onto the form, and then write code in the basic programming language to make the application work. You won't make a career for yourself by writing in Gambas, but, if you need to knock together something quickly, or you want to create a proof of concept then it will suffice, old school Visual Basic developers will feel at home. Whilst you watch me create a guess the number game using Gambas, it is a good time to ask you whether you like this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to watch more content from Everyday Linux user.